I believe fundamentally that we make very poor use of our talents. Very many people go through their whole lives having no real sense of what their talents may be, or if they have any to speak of. I meet all kinds of people who don't think they're really good at anything, and I think there are many possible explanations for it. And high among them is education, because education, in a way, dislocates very many people from their natural talents. And human resources are like natural resources; they're often buried deep. You have to go looking for them. They're not just lying around on the surface. You have to create the circumstances where they show themselves. And you might imagine education would be the way that happens, but too often it's not. Picasso once said this. He said that all children are born artists. The problem is to remain an artist as we grow up. I believe this passionately. That we don't grow into creativity; we grow out of it, or rather, we get educated out of it. Truthfully, what happens is, as children grow up, we start to educate them progressively from the waist up, and then we focus on their heads and slightly to one side. So you were probably steered benignly away from things at school when you were a kid, things you liked. On the ground, you would never get a job doing that. Is that right? Don't do music. You're not going to be a musician. Don't do art. You won't be an artist.、Uh, benign advice. Now, profoundly mistaken. And the consequence is that many highly talented, brilliant, creative people think they're not, because the thing they were good at at school wasn't valued or was actually stigmatised. And I think we can't afford to go on that way. Human communities depend upon a diversity of talent, not a singular conception of ability. Human talent is tremendously diverse. People have very different aptitudes, but it's not only about that. It's about passion and what excites our spirit and our energy. The reason so many people are opting out of education is because it doesn't feed their spirit. It doesn't feed their energy or their passion. I'm doing a new book at the moment called Epiphany, which is、uh, based on a series of interviews with people about how they discovered their talent. I'm fascinated by how people got to be there.、Uh, it's really prompted by a conversation I had with a wonderful woman who may, most people have never heard of. She's called Gillian Lynn. She's a choreographer, and everybody knows her work. She did Cats and Phantom of the Opera. She's wonderful. Anyway, Gillian and I had lunch one day. I said, "How did you get to be a dancer?" And she said it was interesting. When she was at school, she was really hopeless, and the school in the 30s wrote to her parents and said, "We think Gillian has a learning disorder." You couldn't concentrate. She was fidgeting. I think now they'd say she had ADHD, wouldn't you? She went to see this、um, this specialist, and she was there with、uh, with her mother. And she was led and sat on this、uh, chair at the end. And she sat on her hands for 20 minutes while this man talked to her mother about all the problems Gillian was having at school. In the end, uh, the uh, the doctor went and sat next to Gillian and said, "Gillian, I've listened to all these things that your mother's told me. I need to speak to her privately." But as they went out the room, he turned on the radio that was sitting on his desk. And when they got out of the room, he said to her mother, "Just stand and watch her." She said she was on her feet, moving to the music. And they watched for a few minutes. And he turned to her mother, and he said, "You know, Mrs. Lynn, Gillian isn't sick. She's a dancer. Take her to a dance school." I said, "What happened?" I said she did. I can't tell you how wonderful it was. We walked in this room, and it was full of people like me—people who couldn't sit still, people who had to move to think, who had to move to think. She was eventually auditioned for the Royal Ballet School. She became a soloist. She had a wonderful career at the Royal Ballet. She eventually graduated from the Royal Ballet School, found, found her own company, the Gillian Lynn Dance Company. Met Andrew Lloyd Webber. She's been responsible for some of the most successful musical theatre productions in history. She's given pleasure to millions, and she's a multi-millionaire. Somebody else might have put her on medication and told her to calm down. We have to recognise that human flourishing is not a mechanical process; it's an organic process, and you cannot predict the outcome of human development. All you can do is create the conditions under which they will begin to flourish.